So the question that I get asked so many times, the question that you all wanted the answer for, what are the resources that I can use to learn malware analysis? And um, first, before we talk about the resources and how to learn malware analysis, let's talk about the prerequisites first. The first thing, you need to have a good networking background. You understand protocols, you understand TCB, UDB, you understand the, the back structure, and you know how to use Wireshark. You don't need to go so deep into uh, CCNA to learn how to use Cisco or learn uh, like the routing protocols or all of this stuff. You just need to understand how the packets work, how the packet structure is, and the, the protocol structures. The protocol structure. So this is the first prerequisite. The second one, you need to have a, a solid um, cybersecurity background. You need to understand the basic terminologies in it. And um, the best resources could be the CH or Security Plus. You didn't need the certificate though. You didn't need to dive so deep into it. You don't need to prepare for the exams. You just have to have a basic understanding. You just need to dive a little bit into one of these uh, two directions and understand what they are teaching. Once you have the prerequisites, now you can start learning malware analysis. And there's two uh, things you need to learn in malware analysis. You need to learn reverse engineering and you need to learn malware analysis. Reverse engineering is to be able to reverse any application, whatever it's uh, compiled into assembly language and whatever the assembly language is, and, uh, or it's compiled to interpreted languages like .NET or Java or Python even, and also able to analyze scripts, able to reverse scripts and understand what they are doing. I mean with scripts like uh, VBA for macros, JavaScript, uh, PHP, Perl, uh, Go language, uh, PowerShell, whatever the language is. And to learn that, first you need to learn a simple language. You don't need, just to make sure you know that, you don't need to learn how to write code in a, in a simple language. You just need to learn how to read code. You don't need to be a programmer beforehand to be able to understand assembly. However, the resources that are out there, most of them, if not all of them, do you require you to be a programmer to be able to understand them? That's unfortunately. Uh, the best resource that if you are a programmer, this is, will be very helpful to you. If you are not, you will struggle, but you will you will need some time to get used to it, which is Isolian tutorials. It's very famous tutorials on uh, assembly language. This is for the assembly. There are resources to learn how to do reverse engineering after you know a little bit of the basics of assembly language. And uh, there are two books that I would recommend. Reversing, The Secrets of Reverse Engineering. It's a very old book, like really, really old. However, it is really, really good. There is lots of things you will learn out of that book. Some things and some tools are obsolete now, but still, it's a very useful book. Another book that you can start reading in it, and it could help you in assembly as well, which is uh, Reverse Engineering for Beginners. It's a free book, completely free, translated into so many languages, and you can find it in beginners.re. All the, the links I will include in the description down below or above or whatever, um, how you are, where you are reading, uh, where you are watching this video. So, these are the first, uh, this is for reverse engineering. Also, you need to understand more about the operating system internals and the best resource is a book called Identify Malicious Code Through Reverse Engineering. And this book, the first half of the book, the first section of that book, is really, really good in understanding Windows internals. The second part maybe is not very important, but the first part is very, very good. The book is small, it's not really, it's not really a big book, and you just need to read the first half of it to have quite a solid understanding of how the operating system works. If you want to dive deeper into that, really, really deeper, then you can use Windows internals. It's a really huge book, it's more a reference, but if you want to dive into a specific topic, this book could be, uh, could be very useful. This is for the reverse engineering. When it comes to, uh, before I go into the other part, in reverse engineering, for you to practice what you have learned, so you, this is where to learn all the theory and learn how all of this works, you may practice a little bit in, uh, in reversing the secrets of reverse engineering. You know how to analyze a malware here and there, but to practice more, you need to uh, start working on 
on some crack maze. There is a, a website in the past was called crackmaze.ge. This website is down. This website used to have lots of uh, crack maze, lots of challenges from level 1 to level 10, and uh, there were people who were solving them and putting the solution online. So you can actually uh, um, work on the crack me, try your luck. You can, if you cracked it, great. If you didn't, you can read the, the solutions. This website, uh, there is a mirror of that website, I think, in totsforyou.com. You can check it out. You can download it and you can navigate there. Get from the level one until level three or four or five, whatever you want to, to reach. This is for the reverse engineering. For malware analysis, Malware analysis for the second part is the malware analysis and it's very important that you just don't, not only you analyze the malware and know what's doing, but you need to make sense of what this behavior is doing, what this behavior is actually helping the attacker achieve. Let's say um, you want to answer specific questions, how it maintain persistence? If, if, the, if the malware is modifying the registry entry, what does that mean? Oh, it means if he's modifying this, he's maintaining uh, persistence or he is trying to propagate through a network if he's creating this file in that file share or things like that. So you need to make sense of the malware behavior and you need to, under to answer specific questions that most of the security team or the incident response teams wants you to answer. And they are mostly basic questions, how it propagates, how much control it gives to the attacker, and what are the lateral movements, does it download more uh, malware, does it spread through a network, does it spread through USB, how it does it spread through a network, how it goes to the next level, whatever the questions are. To learn malware analysis and to learn how to understand what the malware are doing and what's the, uh, understand all of that, there are multiple books to use. The first one, which is practical malware analysis, it will help you also in reverse engineering and learning assembly and so on. Another book is Learning Malware Analysis by Monapa. This is more new, so I would assume it's updated. It's more updated than practical malware analysis, but both books are great. After that, after you read these books and after you start practicing with them, these two books will give you the, the basics. They are not very, very deep. So this is the first level. And the second level, you can check Mastering Malware Analysis. That's a book that I have published with uh, Alexei Klimino, and it gets you to the next level. This is learning the theory, the same as we did with, rever with reverse engineering. Now you want to practice. You need to download lots of different uh, malware samples, and you need also the solutions, as we did with the crack means, you need to see uh, malware analysis reports for these malware. To download lots of malware samples, especially the malware that are known and have an analysis reports out there by big companies, you can look at uh, contagio.dump.blogspot.com. It's a website or a blog it was created by uh, Mila Baclor, and she's a security researcher. And uh, she has collected lots of samples, especially for known EBT attacks with their names, with their categories. These malware samples have been analyzed by so many different companies, including FireEye, Semantic, Kaspersky, and their reports, their malware analysis reports are out there. You can check them out. There is a, there is a guy who collected uh, so many reports uh, from all of these companies and put them into one uh, big uh, repository on GitHub. It's called EBT Notes, ABT for EBT Attacks, EBT Notes. And uh, I will put the links all uh, around. So basically, he collected all these reports. You can check these reports, see what are the malware samples related to these reports, get them from Contagio Dom, uh, the samples that she has collected, start analyzing them, look at the reports and learn from them and see how, how you are getting uh, compared to the, the analysis reports that are out there. So that is basically most of the resources. Once you get a grip of the, this will help you in the reverse engineering, it will help you also analyzing different macros because some of them are documents or phishing emails or JavaScript code. And um, the, the, the science is the same. Reverse engineering 
is the same. Whatever if you're analyzing assembly language or a VBA macro or JavaScript or PowerShell, you will see that the evidences that you are looking for are always the same. You are looking for how to download the next, uh, the next phase. You will see download file or download URL to file. And these are commands that are used in assembly Windows commands or EBIs that are used in Windows in, uh, used in um, exe applications, it's used in VBA macros, they are used as well in, uh, in PowerShell. So it's the same things you're looking for, the same clues and the same evidences. And with the same malware announced background, you can make sense of this behavior and understand what they mean in the malware announced context uh, and what privilege and what, uh, um, what it gives actually to the attacker and how it helps him achieve what he's trying to achieve. So that's for the main resources. Also, I wanted to tell you that, uh, to inform you that I also have a malware analysis tra training, a complete malware analysis training. In this training, I really created for the people who, uh, who are coming from administration background or from non-programming background, and they want to work, they want to learn malware analysis, they want to work in this field, uh, they want to build their career and build their resume so they can actually um, apply for a job and able to get a job in malware analysis. It's a complete training. It takes you from complete beginner into the level that you are um, and that you are interview ready so you can get a job very soon. So I will put the link for this training around here. You can check it out. Uh, it's in maltrack.com slash join. I wish to see you there. And anyway, if you have any more questions, just let me know. If you have more resources that you recommend as well, let me know in the comments below what, what resources that you find useful, what books you find useful. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.